People want to be entertained, but the minute you open up about it and have some fun, they bash you for it. They want you to play inside a box, but if you dare step outside the little box, you're in trouble. You're a diva. You're not a team player. Well, there's no box for me. I ain't completely out of the box. You gonna be a football player when you grow up? Today is the best day of your life. Believe it. Give me eight years of daylight. That's the greatest leader I've ever known. What a ride it's been. Child, please. Exotic vehicles, the Lamborghinis, the Rolls Royces. It was always a that look at me now. I make this much, and this is what you're supposed to drive. You know, by society standards, this is the way it's supposed to be. When you have money, this is what you're supposed to have. I went through that phase for maybe two or three years during my tenure, and I got over it quick. You know, I'm gonna get a smart car, it's efficient. I can get from point A to point B the same way I could in my Lambo or Phantom or any, anything else exotic that I own. And the fact of the matter was at that point, my name was bigger. My name itself was bigger than anything I could purchase. My name itself. So there was really no need for it. There was really no need for the look at me now or look what I'm driving, you know. It was pointless, you know. One of football's most polarizing personalities, Chad Johnson traveled a journey through the NFL that was unpredictable and entertaining. I got a trivia question. It's a new year. Same old question. How do you stop 85? The prototype for the show stopping, high flying wide receiver. Johnson made plenty of plays and did plenty of talking. This ain't what you want. This ain't what you want. What you looking at? Huh? What you looking at? 240,000. I don't care what you are. I don't care what you are. Yeah, I was 35. Man, they all suck, man. Come on, you, you, I'm just me. It's no, me. I just want to know, I was 35. Horrible. You have to have some type of selfishness to you in anything that you do to be successful at it. Sometimes that selfishness is mistaken or arrogance or cockiness. You can go my way because I'm going to be open. I got you. Looking for Chad in the back of the end zone. Nice. Touchdown. Nice. But uh, ain't nobody humble out here. They are pressing me one-on-one -on -one with no help. Take advantage of it. Let's go. Because humble ain't getting you nowhere. You can't be humble and be great because you have to have a certain drive and, and tenacity about you to get the damn job done. If we don't win this game, I'm not doing my job.
In his 10 seasons with the Bengals, Johnson earned six Pro Bowl appearances and became Cincinnati's all-time leader in receptions, receiving yards, and receiving touchdowns. 85, who can cover him? He says nobody. I got you. Every time I watch it, I'm like, oh my gosh, we got 85 this week. You know, you know he gonna talk, you know he want the ball. I asked you a trivia question before the game started. I still need that answer. Like, he has some of the quickest feet that I've ever seen. <laughs> and you talk about <laughs> This is why he's telling people to kiss the baby. Well, you gonna kiss the baby today. Man, he was the most dominant receiver for, I don't know, how many years. I could see at the line of scrimmage, you look across the ball, and I could see there was guys that were scared to death that Ocho was out there. They all scared to death over here. They only wanna talk. They don't wanna play no ball, bro. Bro, I can see it in their eyes, bro. Chad Johnson created a persona that was larger than life. How do you stop 85? Whether he was dancing in the end zone, riding bulls, <laughs> racing horses, or changing his name to Ocho Cinco. Ocho Cinco from now on. Goes all against everything coaches stand for, you know, particularly myself. We don't need to bring attention to ourselves, but that's what got him up and excited to go play. And dug myself. Put the thing on me. Huh? Critics considered him disrespectful and a distraction. The NFL was also not amused by Johnson's antics. They find you because they think that's what you cherish the most, the money. And obviously it's really great to be at a certain level where you're playing a game, you're paid good for it, but that's not why I'm here which is why I never stop doing it, because I'm not here for the money. If I get in the end zone, make sure you keep the camera on me. Because this is how I feel the game of football is supposed to be played. It's about entertainment. It's about having fun. And a little dance from Chad Johnson, a little jig in New Orleans. These people pay $75 a ticket. You mean to tell me I'm not gonna give them a show? I'm giving you your money's worth. I'm gonna give you your money's worth before I leave the day. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Jamie Dukes and Ocho Cinco podcast. Are you eating lunch on the job? What yeah, I'm eating, McDon I'm eating McDonald's. How you eating McDonald's during the show? What's wrong with that? Well, I mean, you know, I'm just, just trying to, you know, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to have a serious conversation. With you. I'm having a serious conversation because I'm eating a serious meal. <laughs> <laughs> but getting back to our conversation, what would the one thing that has been misconstrued about Check. That I'm an ass. For some reason, people think I'm an ass. I know the perception. Yeah, man. Because you have nothing to go off of except what's portrayed through mainstream media. It's so funny. Everybody's first reaction is you're nothing like I thought you'd be. Because I'm just completely different type of dude outside of that element of football. 
For 11 seasons, the merry prankster of the NFL kept his audience captivated. But an unexpected exit would forever put a dark cloud over his career. Chad Johnson, currently in Broward County Jail in Florida, arrested Saturday night on a charge of domestic violence. I asked myself the question, right. at what point do the sins of your past not catch up to you? Well, it's never worked that way in society. And even for myself, my, my mistake, my mistake that I made, I'm not the same guy five years ago that made that completely, utterly, disrespectful, stupid mistake to my then wife. But once you make that mistake, I learned and understood that that will carry and stay with me for the rest of my life. So I'm tainted goods no matter what from this day. No matter what. No matter what, there's no, there's nothing I can do, there's nothing I can say that will stick with and stay with me until I'm six feet under. Well, that's even if they put me under. I might get cremated, if that, and they have my ashes spread over the ocean with a pot of orcas. But that's, that's later on down the line. But you get the point. And you have to understand that. I have workout stuff, ladders, cones, ping pong table, of course. I'm the 1992 Liberty City ping pong champ. I have a damn kennel up there, but I don't have an animal, so I don't know where the hell that kennel came from. You can learn a lot about things and people if you know their origins. Just pulled up to Grandma's house. We're in the beautiful Liberty City. And this is where it all started. The area we were in was a bad area. My grandmother's name is Bessie made flowers. She ended up raising me. The reason why, I've really never gotten into. I've really never asked. She was just the one that, that took care of the responsibility of, of raising me and making me the man that I am today. I used to play throw up tackle right here on the park. You now I'd be out here with all the kids, man having fun. So you gotta think back in the you know, late 80s, early 90s, and you know, this was a war zone. This was Iraq before the Iraqi war went on. This was Iraq, period. A drug raid on a South Florida home in a search for cocaine. See the lighting right now? So I probably had about this is a memory. I probably got 30, 40 minutes before I had to be in the house. When that light pole, when that light pole comes on, I better be somewhere in the vicinity or on that front porch. When nighttime falls, you in the house. Although athletically talented, bad grades and bad behavior kept Johnson from playing Division I college football. Of course, and every time there's a receiver around, somebody would call me and say, oh, Charlie, you gotta really see this kid. He says he's wild, he's all over the place. He said, but if anybody can, you know, fix him, you can. I said, all right. 
I didn't have a game to begin with. I was a young kid out of Liberty City, out of Dade County, that had raw talent. It's like having fish or chicken that's not seasoned. It looked good. It looked good. But until you cook it, until you season it, and do everything right and prepare the right way, it's nothing but just chicken. So I would just raw. He thought he could play, but he couldn't play work for turd. You know, he, he was a really a turd. He was teaching me to play receiver on what I would need to get open, to understand the game, to see the game at the next level. The knowledge that he was able to give me at such a young age, there was no way I was going to get that anywhere else. Chad was maturing into a superstar on the field, but he was still having problems in the classroom. Johnson missed the entire 1998 season because he was academically ineligible. I would literally pick him up because if he had to take the bus there, it wasn't going to happen. He, could, he would get distracted if... If he seen a pretty girl on the bus, he probably wouldn't make it to school, you know. That was my father figure. He stepped in at that time when there was none. You know, not only becoming, helping become the receiver that I was, but he filled in as a, the role of a father that I didn't have. And when Coach C came in, that was, that was a huge, a huge, Huge help. Johnson got his grades up, and after three years of junior college, Chad transferred to Oregon State, where in just one season, he caught the attention of NFL teams. So I said, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself. You've jumped around. You really weren't in any one place very long. I said, why is it? And he said, well, coach, I can tell you one thing. He said, I don't drink. I love football, but I absolutely hate school. I didn't like school, period, point blank. I didn't like it. And so that's why I've had this issue of jumping around, because I couldn't keep my grades up. I just want to play football. That's it. Nothing less, nothing more. Cincinnati has selected wide receiver from Oregon State University, Chad Johnson. There is no better feeling than when you get that name call. You can't replace that. You can't. At that time, I was just happy to be a part of the draft in general. I was happy to have my name being mentioned, you know? Now, you know where I come from? You know how hard it is? You know the odds were stacked against me my entire life. And I didn't make it any easier. I didn't make it any easier. I went the long way. So he just barely, barely got through the cracks. I mean, it was that close. Raised in Liberty City, Chad Johnson now had the freedom to pursue his dream of playing pro football. took me and I was forever grateful. I didn't care where I went, which a lot of players need to focus on. It really doesn't matter where you go. It's what you do once you get there. That's it. To understand Cincinnati, when Chad was drafted by the Bengals, you have to go back to the 1990s, which has been referred to as the lost decade in Cincinnati. 
They went to the playoffs in January of 1991, and then, unfortunately, they were basically the NFL's laughing stock for about 13 years. I heard players talking about that they don't want to come to the Bengals, but this is where I want to be to make a difference. That's how I felt when I got drafted. Are they losing? Well, I'm going to do everything I can to change everything around. If Cincinnati at that time was a dim light, I was going to make sure they were going to shine. Chad Johnson provided Cincinnati with high-speed service, but without a connection. Keep your head in the game, man. Don't let them throw you the ball. Don't worry about them not throwing you the ball. You got to keep your head in the game now. After winning just two games in 2002, the Bengals hired head coach Marvin Lewis to lead them out of the division basement. Chad Johnson set his sights even higher. What's up today? You tired? Secret. Sir. I want to be one of the greatest to ever play this game. That's not a secret. But I want to be better than Rice. That's right. Y'all got to help me. And we're going to help you. Well, I, th I think I told him that that was a good thing, but doing the work to, to be better than Jerry Rice, that's the hard part. Five weeks into the 2003 season, Johnson not only bought in to Coach Lewis's challenge, he raised the stakes. Well, we were sitting in the office and he'd had had a bad game. I was upset at my performance against Buffalo. I'd never forget that. Pops in, got this check written out to me for $100,000 and said, uh, if my next game I don't perform up to par, I want you to keep this and cast that check. And I, I meant it. Next game, I went crazy. I went off. never had any intention of keeping it. I had it in my top desk drawer and then ripped it up at the end of the year, but it was that was kind of typical of Chad. If they stop me today, any any coverage, two man 55, cover two, man to man, I will give you my game check. I needed the press to perform at a high level. It's really weird. It's like you know, most, most players like to go into games quiet and, and just play. I needed to force myself. I needed to put pressure on myself to go out there and play week in and week out. Chad Johnson, Cincinnati Bengals. He said the whole secondary package. You watch out. <laughs> you don't want to what? You got a father. You see that? Wow. The whole point was I was going to make them sick or they were going to get sick of covering me, so here's some Pepto ahead of time. So he sent them boys a... Uh... Yeah, bottles of Pepto. <laughs> <laughs> you do stuff like that, don't you? People thought that was a ploy. It wasn't. That's just who Chad was. Chad was a showman that way, and he needed that. This is, this is the standard, and next on the list is Jerry Azuma. As we can see, we have two fallen victims already, Mr. Baxter and Mr. Smooth. The list in his locker, I love that list. It was a list, you know, going into the week, would this guy be able to cover me one-on-one? -on -one? I thought it was funny. I mean, I... I thought it was funny. As long as he came to work and practice every day, I didn't care. And he no doubt practiced harder than just about anybody I've ever played with. Marvin Lewis was not a fan of the list. I came in this morning 
and the authority had taken that good list down. And this is what was put in my locker. So therefore, I have to challenge myself throughout the week to make sure I help lead my team to victory. I'm always telling him, no, don't do that. Don't do that. You know, if I could get wind of it. Hey, come on. I want you right there. All right. That's why I need you. I wanted to make sure you were at your best so you understood where I was at my game at the time to where I know you're coming and I'm still going to beat you. I used to tell Chris McAllister my routes. Chris, I got a slant, what you gonna do? I used to tell him, it could stop me. <laughs> it's not that I was a physical presence and I was, nah, it's not what it was. My feet, they were scared of my feet. There was nothing you could do. <laughs> His abruptness and his ability to start and stop. I don't know if there's a receiver to, that's played this game that could create more separation than Chad could. His quickness was a major problem. I didn't really want to be in man coverage no matter who we had on him. <laughs> You can take your feet and take the route and make it look a certain way and then break it off that quick, the way he can. He can stop on the dime, you know, he don't weigh but a buckle of five. <laughs> He could be on the sideline and be close to going out of bounds and find a way to hang in the air for another half a second. Contort his body in the air like a gymnast to make the catch, secure the ball, and get both of his feet in bounds. Unbelievable effort. You talk about body control. I'm always open. I'm always open. I'm open. Just throw me the ball. I'm 7 11, always open. You know, it's. <laughs> you can put him in a phone booth with a couple of DBs and he'll, he'll pick up the phone like, hey, I'm open. I promise, double team, triple team. And I had to put Bush Davis out there. Right. I got everything. In 2005, Johnson led the AFC in receiving yards for a third straight year while making good on his rookie year promise. 2005 was the year that it combined his excellence with the team finally being good. Touchdown, Chad Johnson. Cincinnati clinches their first division title since 1990. And with his antics, the list, Chad made Cincinnati cool again. And uh, thanks to you for, uh, you know, bringing hope. You are again a source of pride of the Tri-State. I am still thankful for the fresh breath of air I brought to that team at a time where it really wasn't fun to watch. We silenced the critics for now. I guarantee you it's going to be something else that they say while we not the real deal. Yeah. Can I get some? I 
really made the game fun and entertaining and never in a malicious way. And it, 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 was, it was so fun to a point where players and coaches and the referee and before games were like, what we got today? Like, what, what's coming? I got a great celebration for you guys again. Just wait and see the next one. Okay. What is your favorite end zone celebration of all time? My favorite? Maybe that sombrero and poncho in honor of Spanish Heritage Month. That was a good one, and maybe the marriage proposal. Chad Johnson on the sideline. He got on a knee like he was proposing to Daphne over there. And um, I don't know if Daphne accepted or not. The river dance? Come on, are you kidding me? In Chicago? I don't know where he got these drop. Something would initiate it on a Tuesday. We went to play the Bears and a commercial for the Lord of the Dance came on TV and I was like, you know what? That looks funny. That looks funny and I'm gonna try to do that dance if I can score. It was different, you know, there's some guys now that dance and they point at themselves and he just wanted to do something that the fans would enjoy. And now he's running the camera. He's taking the crowd shot. It's actually pretty funny. I mean, in Cincinnati, it was a weekly game. What's he going to do next? I liked every one of them except one. And dug myself. Put that thing on me. Huh? What, is, what does that say? Future, future Hall of Fame. That was dope. Well, Marvin Lewis was a little upset about it. I'm sure he was, along with a lot of other people. I wasn't upset. Did Marvin talk to you about it? I can't remember. Even if he did, I probably wasn't listening. Bad move. Told him that when I found out about it after the fact. I mean, that's the pinnacle of this profession. And never uh, do you do anything that would be construed as is not respectful of the Hall of Fame. His pranks and his dances that he did, by doing those stunts, it put so much pressure on himself that if the game didn't break his way right away in the game he'd get totally frustrated and they would almost do the opposite and take him out of his game i will never forget chad coming out first time i seen him do it you know he kind of walked around the parking lot and thanked everybody for being there for the playoff game because he was coming to put on a show. Good to see you. You're good? Yes, sir. All hey, right. you don't like this one. Trust me, you're going to like it. Yeah, but you got to get in the end zone first. I will. I got to talk to him right there. All right. You, I got to talk to him now. The atmosphere was crazy. It, it, was just, it, just, it just felt different than any home game. Carson launches that ball to Chris sets the tone for the game like, oh man, it's gonna be a long day for the Steelers. And I look back and Carson's down. I'm like, ah. Carson Palmer being carted off. We had a very capable backup in John Kitna and John went in and did a good job but the problem was the ball wasn't getting to Chad. Well, he couldn't get the ball because the game plan changed. In all fairness to John, John is a tremendous player. But you're going to play John different than you play Carson Palmer. Johnson finished the game with just four receptions and failed to reach the end zone in the Bengals' loss. 
after the game, reports of a halftime fight between Johnson and his coaches emerged from the media. There wasn't a fight. I think at halftime what happened was Chad came in and he was getting the IV in his arm and he was very frustrated. And he just kind of went off and, you know, I need to get the ball for us to win. I need to get the ball. And he yanked the IV out because he was getting the IV at halftime. So the blood starts spurting. And all of a sudden, this big commotion comes rolling out of the training room. And he's being loud. And so I think everybody thinks it's, oh my gosh, him and you are fighting. Chad can't fight nobody. That's the, the most amazing thing, because Chad Johnson can't whoop nobody, nor would he ever take a swing at somebody that could swing back at him. I think everyone in that locker room could have beat me up back then. I was like 180 pounds. I know a lot of people say it was one of his worst times, and people seen him as being very selfish, but I really didn't because, in his opinion, had he touched the ball, we would have had a better chance to win. I think he was a good selfish when he was Chad Johnson. I think it was a bad selfish when he became Ocho Cinco. Has he ever worn, has he ever had Ocho Cinco as his uniform before? To our knowledge? That'd be a good idea, to, I, I didn't know. I thought it was a great idea, and the idea came from Carson himself. Hey, why don't you put Ocho Cinco on the back of your jersey? He tried to speak a lot of Spanish, and he obviously never took Spanish. Marquina, let's go, please. Marquina, ven aquí. And he was always wrong when he tried to put him into a sentence. Uh, so Joe Cinco just kind of made sense. Hey, take, take that off for me. Take it off, take it off, just so I get in trouble. The NFL fined me for it. So my thought was, I'm going to change it in the offseason, legally, to Ocho Cinco, to where it has to be on the back of my jersey permanently. People were like, that's stupid. Ocho Cinco, that's not even 85. Okay, who cares? He gets a percentage of every sale of a jersey that's sold. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> What's up, man? This is your boy, Chad. AK Ocho Cinco, AK the Black Mexican. We didn't speak. I wouldn't accept his calls until he changed his name. Because that's not who I taught how to play the position. I taught Chad Johnson. I thought Ocho Cinco was a clown. There he had a dollar in his hand as if he said, oh, I bet you a dollar that I. <laughs> that's a completed pass. Either that, he was going to pay off the officials. Nothing suffered. Nothing. I was enjoying the game the same way I did as Johnson. The same couldn't be said for the Bengals. After three straight seasons of missing the playoffs, the once beloved toast of the town became a target. My frustration with Ocho Cinco He's a phenomenal player, but until he stopped doing some of that stuff, it eventually costs this team. Well, that's the nature of the beast. You know, you, you get you get leeway uh, with it when you're winning, but when it starts to go the other way, the team's losing, those antics start to become an issue. Do you feel like you're being a distraction, or is that what you've been told? Are we reading the same papers? Are we seeing the same stuff? It was right in a long line of, oh my goodness, here's something different he's doing now. You know, between the horse and all the different things he did. There came a point where Chad became different than the Chad that first was on the scene when I came here. And football didn't end up being as important as it once was to him. I think I was more so frustrated with losing. Dude, that, that 
wears on you, man. Man, we got to win stuff like this, man. They ain't supposed to be close no more. That's the bangles of old. And to say that the way I am and the way I operate, the way I play the game, is part of the reason we're losing, that hurt. That, 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 that stung. That stung. It's me. <laughs> no, seriously, every, everything is me. You know, uh, a lot of, you know, a lot of media from the outside is pointing the finger. When things don't go right with us offensively, it's my damn fault. So this is where the magic happens. Most people, when they say this is where the magic happens, they're really speaking about their bedroom. For me, this is my magic, my outlet, my, my sense of peace. This is dude I used to beat up on. This is, this is a legend, this is a goat. Matter of fact, this is probably the best linebacker to ever play the game of football. He goes by the name of Ray Lewis. He was scared of me. I always called him 85. So he had this thing about him, man. He just had this confidence about him. Me personally, I loved it. Man, whatever, we here. I told we you about here, that when I told we you. Here. What I told Lee, you. Lee, we here, all right. Yeah, all right. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> After a disappointing 2008 season, Ocho Cinco's future with the Bengals was questioned. But that offseason, he used a unique platform to deliver and define a message to his critics. Oh, got him! I need to hear the things that they say I can't do anymore. He's done washed up, he's getting old. Child, please. Hey, that's one of them like, child, please. Child, please. You know what child, please mean. Child, please is a nice way of telling someone, you know, you. Like if somebody come to you, if coach come to you and be like, man, did he cover you? You could just look at coach and be like, Man, Coach, child, please, because you really disrespecting me, right? Like, I really don't need to explain this to you, but if I say it with some, with some, some oomph, child, please, child, please. That's like, man, you too. You feel me? Try it, man. It work. Ocho Cinco bounced back in 2009 and Cincinnati won the AFC North. Snap back to Palmer. Throws, looking for Chad, and it is picked by Revis. But after another early playoff exit, the hard knocks ham wasn't shy about wanting help. In the following off season, the Bengals gave him a co-star. Let's go, baby. Let's take turns now. I'm thinking to myself, T.O., Carson, myself, oh man, it's going to be bananas. With what we have on paper, if we don't win a Super Bowl this year, it's a damn shame. Didn't work. It didn't work. They had won the division the year before. Locally, a lot of people thought that T.O. was the guy that would put them over the top. How you feeling? I'm 
That's great. Thanks for asking. Teal was playing with a broken hand. Chad was playing with an ankle injury. It was just off, but Chad was so frustrated with the organization. All the antics had stopped. He was a different person. What's up? What's, What's good, baby? How you doing? You good? Good I'm to doing see good. you. How's everything? Good Keep me in touch, brother. All right, I got you. We're gonna make this happen I got someday. You. Yeah. Mike Brown told me that they wanted to move on from him. Felt like he would help us that position based on his talent and his experience. At the time, Chad was dancing with the stars. He was doing reality TV and a complete antithesis on the surface of a Bill Belichick player. But Bill Belichick loved Chad Johnson. So we're double covering this. So you get all the night off. Come on. Come on. Oh, yeah. We're going to watch you run in the end zone and spike the ball here. And Bill knew that for all of the other stuff, Chad was about football. Once I walked in here and, you know, Mr. Kraft and Belichick gave me my angel wings, <laughs> I was set. Great team. Really, really great team. But not the right system for my type of style of play, or just a predominantly outside receiver in general, unless your last name is Moss. With the Bengals, he basically lined up in one spot. In New England, that's not their offense. The receivers have to make pre-snap reads, and if Tom says you're supposed to go eight yards and then cut, don't do it six and don't do it nine. He wants you at eight yards. And I think that was a difficulty. What else can I do? I don't want to cut it short. Nothing. You're doing good. You're doing good. Just keep playing hard. That's all I want. And that was the first time where I felt afraid to be myself. It's going to be a little quiet. I probably won't be talking to the media much. Probably not at all, really. I think he had this idea in, in his head of what he was supposed to be. And I think by stifling himself, it may have actually affected his play. I don't think it was anybody's fault. He tried hard, we tried hard. Offensively, we didn't get as much out of him as they did. Uh, that's for sure. You've waited a long time for this now. Yes, sir. Bring it. Come on, enjoy yourself. He caught a pass in the Super Bowl, but I know he's disappointed that personally he didn't put up the kind of numbers that he had done for so many years in Cincinnati. After one season in New England, the kid from Liberty City returned home. And though a one-year contract with the Miami Dolphins was signed Ocho Cinco, it was Chad Johnson who showed up at training camp. I was getting ready to walk down the aisle. I felt it was appropriate to be a Johnson. Man, that wifey made you soft, huh? You had to go to the court, change that name. <laughs> and when I got here, if you watch some of the clips from the interviews I did when it came to talking to the media. Are you watching? You been out there? Yes. Fast. I was back to being Chad. I mean, as far as the workouts were going, I was just, I was just back. Everything felt right. I felt fast. I feel like a cheetah. Just, just everything was in tune, and I, I was ready to rock. We're following breaking news off the top at 11, just one night after his Dolphins debut, wide receiver Chad Johnson has been arrested for allegedly striking his wife. Evelyn told police a headbutt resulted with a laceration on her forehead. Evelyn was transported to a local hospital after being treated on the scene. 
Chad remains in the Broward County Jail. Well, I, I know I knew I had messed up. There, there was no coming back from that. There was no rebounding. There, was, there wasn't enough sorries. There was nothing I could do or say at that moment once I had gotten in trouble for that stupidness on my part. There, there was nothing I could do. Going to jail, uh, sitting in that cell, having time to think, having time to reflect, I knew it was a wrap. I knew it was over. I understand the way the game works. I understand the politics of the game. I understand the black eye and the bad position I put the Dolphins organization in, especially Coach Filming. Before even walking into his office, I knew it was going to happen after the mistake I had made. Uh, it, it's just, it's, it's, not, it's not just, it's not really just last night or that, it's just, you know, where we are as a program and where you are and where we're headed, I just don't see the, the mesh right now. And, uh, you know, it's, I wish it was different. I wish I could tell you something more encouraging, but, um, you know, I just think it's the best for both of us that, you know, we kind of part ways at this point in time. I was surprised. Um, because I knew he was getting a chance to play again, and that's what he wanted so bad to be back in Miami, you know, at home. And what was reported was not the chat that I knew. We had probably his best off-season work, you know, and all that work we put in again, you know, to clean up his game and to go and have that incident was just unfortunate. It was just really uh, disappointing, really. Johnson pleaded no contest to domestic battery. And in an agreement with his ex-wife and prosecutors, received one year probation with no jail time. But after failing to follow through with his probation appointments, Johnson was back in court the following spring and once again reached a plea deal that kept him out of jail. The judge's words were somewhere along the lines of, you need to thank your lawyer on a job well done. Are you satisfied with the assistance of your attorney? He's awesome. Okay. You should be. He's an excellent attorney. He did a great job for you, sir. And being football nature and not thinking twice, you know, just gave him a pat. Do you have any questions of Mr. Swivel? Do you have any questions for him? I wasn't doing it to be funny, and I didn't want her to lose control of her courtroom, which did happen. And she didn't like it. I'm not going to accept these plea negotiations. I don't think anything's funny about it, Mr. Johnson. This isn't a joke. I didn't do it as a joke. Everybody in the courtroom was laughing. I'm not accepting these plea negotiations. Johnson was sentenced to 30 days in jail, but served only seven after issuing an apology to the court. You know, the way movies predict the happy ending, it's not, that's not real life. There are situations where it happens like that, but that ain't reality. And I'm one of those that, that understands that can't rewind time. You can't get that back. There's no point in 
rehashing it, rethinking it. Life continues to go on. This is what I'd be playing for. Carlsberg. There wouldn't be no Freddie or no David Beckham. In the NFL, Chad Johnson made a living using his hands. What a play! How about those for some hands? Now in retirement, he stays busy using his feet. During the 2011 NFL lockout, Johnson practiced with a professional soccer club. And today he continues to hone his skills playing the other kind of football. It was always my first love growing up. For some reason, I don't know why I went drawn to the soccer ball when it was time for PE class at North Beach Elementary. You know, they put all the balls out at once and the kids run and grab what you want. Man, I went straight to the soccer ball. That was my love. You gotta be kidding. Wow. Chad Ochocinco <laughs> is going to kick the extra point. Hey, you know what? I heard he kicks pretty well. High snap. Look at this. He drills it. <laughs> Chad Ochocinco with the point. Chad Ochocinco with plenty of height drills it right down the middle. No, I got it, man. Remember, I've been in play soccer all my life. Yeah, yeah. I used a soccer ball to warm up. I would juggle to warm up before I would go out and stretch before any game and practice sometimes. Marvin hated that. Whatever happened to the soccer ball you used to kick around the stadium? You still have? I think it's still there. It might still be there. Yeah, so we once pulled a prank on Chad where this was a distraction all the every day before practice is him going out on the field, taking this ball out of the ball bag and then kicking it around the field, so. <laughs> oh, that's where the damn ball went, man. It, one day it disappeared and nobody ever knew where it went. <laughs> so it's been here in the office, so I think, you know, you can take it back and give it to him. <laughs> One that I couldn't find it. I, I got to go get my ball back. Although the sun has set on Chad Johnson's football career, his NFL legacy remains one of a kind. One of the purest competitors I probably ever played against in football. got to put him in conversation as one of the most talented guys, you know, at the receiver position. Chad's out there. Got it! Throws long. Got him! Got Chad wide open! Touchdown, Chad Johnson! I don't think people remember how well and how good this man played and how he could get in and out of breaks with anybody, how he could create separation and how sometimes uncoverable he was. What? He still doesn't think to this day that there's a defensive back that can cover him.
Everything he did, he just wanted to bring a smile to his fans' faces. <laughs> Probably more than than anybody I, I've played with. Any people that ain't even drunk, man. Come on, man. Get up. I think Chad Johnson, more than anybody else, or more than anything else, just wants to be loved. I need you. I need you. I need I need the crowd. I don't think we sold out today. We could put you up there in section 404 with a tiger head. <laughs> and at the height of his fame and his skills, man did he get it. I played the game the way I felt it should have been played. I played the game for the fans, for one. I played the game and continued to be myself and stay true to myself on the way I was raised to play the game of football. Period. That's it, and I wasn't changing. I had a great football life.